Now that ABC Company has figured out the amount of cash that it paid for plant acquisition and the amount of cash that it paid for dividends to its shareholders, it has enough information to make its statement of cash flows. We can use some of the information posted on our income statement. We can use the difference between some of our balances for our accounts posted on our balance sheet to fill in this statement of cash flows. We're going to use the indirect method, which means our first step in the operating section, our first of the three main sections that we have, is to adjust our reported amount of net income to the actual amount of cash, which was provided by or used for operating activities. So first line, we are going to start with net income. And we have that number. That is provided to us on our income statement. So two columns over here, column B and C. I'm going to put it into the right column column C. And I'm going to go to my income statement and I'm going to grab our net income for the period, which listed here is $30,000 at the bottom of our income statement. And I'm going to bring it over to start our statement of cash flows. Now we need to start our series of adjustments, which are going to reconcile our net income to the cash that was provided by or used for operating activities. You can do this in any order that you please. Um, it's good to find your order and always do it in a set pattern so you don't forget things. So we're going to use the order that I use here, which is to start with adjusting for anything that we have on our income statement that is going to affect our income, which actually didn't affect our cash flows. And the first one of those that we're going to have is our depreciation expense. If I go back to our income statements, I see that we had a depreciation expense of $30,000 and that ultimately lowered the amount of net income we reported. But depreciation in its nature is a non-cash expenditure. It's not like you have to hand over $5,000 when your car loses $5,000 in value from you driving it. You paid for it ahead of time. What depreciation does is it recognizes the expense of that initial purchase that you had over a period of time. So the cash for these assets will have already changed hands. We're just recognizing the expense and our reported income, but it's not affecting our cash at this point in time. So what we need to do here is we need to reverse it out. If it lowered our net income, but it's not lowering our cash, we need to take that depreciation expense and we need to add it back in. I'm going to put this in the leftmost column because we're going to add up all of these adjustments later. So I go back to our income statement. I see we have depreciation expense of $30,000. Click on it, click enter and we have that added back in. What other items do we have on our income statement will have affected our net income, <clears throat> but not had any change on our cash? And I see a big one down here, this loss on asset disposition. We threw out an asset that our books said was worth $14,000. We declared a loss on the disposition of that asset, which ultimately reduced our net income. But the cash had already changed hands way in the past on that asset that we threw out. At the time that we threw it out, it's not like it affected the cash balance of our you know, company checking account. So that loss on asset disposition is going to lower our net income, but it has no bearing on our actual cash flows. So I'm going to go back to our statement of cash flows. My second line in here for non-cash expenditures or revenues that affected our income statement but did not affect our cash flow is the loss on asset disposition. And since it lowered our net income but it didn't lower our cash flow and I'm adjusting that income to the actual cash that came from operations, I'm going to add it back in. So the rule of thumb is that when you have a loss and you're adjusting your net income to cash, it always is a positive. It always gets added back in. So since that was negative on our thing and it's showing up negative now, I'm going to go into my formula bar. I'm going to hit a little negative after the equal sign, and that'll turn that number positive. Losses get added back into net income. Gains get subtracted from net income. And non-cash expenditures, like depreciation expense, always get added back in. Now that we have that done, we're using the indirect method which means we're going to adjust cash by the amount, the changes that we have in our current asset accounts and our current liability accounts. And those are all present on our uh, comparative balance sheet. So 
we're going to take all of our non-cash. Cash doesn't count for what we're doing right now because this is ultimately going to be our answer. We take all of our non-cash assets, like accounts receivable, like merchandise inventory, and we adjust our cash flow for that amount. So let's start with what happened to accounts receivable. Accounts receivable was 17000 It went up to 26000 It's an increase of $9,000. So if I go to my adjustments and I put increase in accounts receivable and AR in here, I can go back to my balance sheet and I can put an entry in for the difference between those two numbers. 26,000 minus 17,000 is 9,000. That increase that we have in accounts receivable actually has to decrease our cash flow. So in the formula bar, I'm going to go put a negative after the equal sign to start with. I'm going to open a parenthesis at the beginning of my formula, close a parenthesis at the end of my formula, and there we go. Now it's negative. Why is an increase in AR going to adjust our net income down? Well, we made that sale and we made it on account, but we still recorded the revenues at the time. It still ended up in our million dollars of sales revenue over here. However, it was on account. We didn't actually get the cash for it. So that amount of, you know, sales that we did is showing up in our net income, but it's not showing up in our cash account because we've not received the cash for it yet. We had an increase to AR. So that's how we start with that section of adjusting our current assets. The next thing that we have on here is a decrease in merchandise inventory. If I go to my balance sheet, I see that our merchandise inventory went from 50,000 last year down to 44,000 this year. So I'm going to go and I'm going to hit equals, go to the balance sheet, and I'm going to subtract those two numbers out that we had. 50,000 minus 44,000 is a decrease of six grand. That decrease that we had in merchandise inventory is an increase to cash flow. Why would that be? Well, one of two things had to happen here. Either we spent less to make less inventory, decrease in merchandise inventory, which means we would have preserved more cash flow and it needs to get adjusted up. Or we paid, we have more inventory on hand that we've been sitting on, which we've not yet sold, which we've not yet had to recognize a cost of goods sold expense for. So that would also increase our cash flow. So for your current assets, the rule of thumb is an increase decreases cash flow and a decrease increases cash flow. For your current assets, do the opposite of what the change was on your comparative balance sheet. We have two liability accounts that are current liabilities that we have to track for. They are accounts payable and they are accrued liabilities, things like salaries payable, utilities payable, et cetera. We'll start with accounts payable. What happened to this account? It was 26,000. It went down to 22,000. We had a $4,000 decrease in our accounts payable. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna put that in here. Decrease in AP this time. Hit equals, go back to my balance sheet, and I see that it went from 26,000 down to 22,000. That is a $4,000 decrease in accounts payable. Accounts payable means you owe money. So if you have a decrease in accounts payable, you are further out of debt. And if you're further out of debt, you had to have transferred more cash to pay off that debt. So a decrease in accounts payable is going to decrease your cash flow. So I got to turn this number negative. So one more time, I'm going to go into a formula bar. Right after the equal sign, I'm going to put a negative symbol in. I'm going to open a parenthesis at the beginning of our formula. I'm going to close the parenthesis at the end of our formula. And it turns that number negative. The other current liability that we have to account for on our balance sheet are our accrued liabilities. They were $19,000 in 2020. They're up to $20,000 in 2021. We are going to go and bring in that increase in accrued liabilities to our statement of cash flows. So I'm one more time going to hit equals in column B. 
I'm going to go back to our balance sheet and I'm going to see that we had $19,000 last year. We've got $20,000 this year. We went up by a grand. If our accrued liabilities went up by a thousand dollars, we had things like salaries payable, utilities payable, which we owe more money on right now. But if we owe more money on it, we've not actually yet paid it, which means we've preserved cash flow. We re we recognize the expense when we accrued that salaries expense and adjustment or that utilities expense and adjustment. But we didn't, and the expense lowered our net income, but it didn't actually affect our cash flow yet because we haven't paid it. So that number wants to be positive. I'm going to do the same thing I did before to turn the number around. And there we go. So for the rule of thumb for current liabilities is you do the same that you would have for a decrease or an increase. A decrease to current liabilities decreases cash flow because you're paying off debt. An increase to a current liability increases cash flow because you are you have already recognized the expense but it's not actually lowering your cash, so you need to reverse it out. And then over here, right next to the bottom of our last item, I'm going to find the sum of all of those numbers up above. And that is 38,000. What does that number mean? It means that the amount of cash that we actually brought in from operating activities, our normal course of operations, whatever they are for ABC company, was $38,000 higher than the amount of net income we reported on our income statement. So for cash provided by operating activities, you simply take your net income and then you add in whatever your amount of adjustments was. In this case, yes, we reported $30,000 in cash during the period, but we had $68,000 or sorry, we reported $30,000 of net income during the period, but we had $68,000 of cash provided by those operating activities. Our next section is our investing section. And the investing section deals pretty much entirely with your non-current assets. So if we go over here, we see that our non-current assets are our equity investments and our property, plant, and equipment. We have ACDEP in here, but that's not... Uh, that's part of a book value thing. We don't got to worry about that. We worry about these two accounts. So what happened to our equity investments? Well, they went from 40000 up to 50000 And our information over here on this tab told us that we paid cash to invest in the common stock of another firm during the period, but we did not sell any of our existing equity investments. Therefore, and here's the big part, the difference in equity investments on the comparative balance sheet is the amount of cash the firm spent to acquire common stock of the other company. Well, let's make that happen then. We had a cash payment for equity investments. And it is the difference between the two numbers we're reporting on our balance sheet, 50,000 minus 40,000, means we spent $10,000 in cash. If we spent the cash, our cash flow has to be going down. So we want that to be negative to our cash flow. So I'm gonna go and put a minus sign after the equal sign, put parentheses around my formula to make sure that number is negative, and it is. What other item do we have on here? We have our PP&E. And yes, our PP&E went up by $31,000, or $129,000 grand to one hundred and sixty grand. But we know from before that we discarded some assets in there. So our amount of cash actually spent isn't just that. How much was it? Well, we already figured this out. It is right here. We paid $45,000 cash to acquire plant assets during the period. So for this line, we're going to have our cash payment for the purchase of plant assets. There we go. I can type. And that's equal to the number that we came up with on our formula bar, which was 45000 If we're paying the cash to acquire those assets, our cash flow has to be going down. So that number should also be negative. So I'm going to put a negative sign in there right after the equal sign. And in total, what do we do for our non-current assets? We spent $10,000 buying more common stock in another company. We spent $45,000 to acquire more plant assets for our own use. In total, we used $55,000 worth of our cash up for 
investing activities. And I know investing is a weird term because you think stocks, bonds, et cetera, when you think of investments, so that could be part of it. But investment in terms of the statement of cash flows is inclusive of all the things that you do to invest in the long-term success of your business, which means acquiring non-current assets like your PP&E. And then we've got two of the three main sections done. We figured out our cash provided by operating. We figured out our cash used for investing. Lastly, we have financing, the way that we obtain funds to be able to buy all of those current and non-current assets and pay off our current liabilities and all of that stuff. Well, how does a company do that? They have two different options. They can finance with debt, which is notes payable, mortgages payable, bonds payable, et cetera. They can finance with equity, which means they can either use the retained earnings that they have, or they can issue new shares of common stock. And then they have other things that affect that stock after it happens. They can repurchase it and it would go into treasury. That would be part of your financing. Or they can pay dividends on the outstanding shares of that stock, which would be your withdrawals from the company. Still part of your financing model. You agreed to pay those dividends when you sold the stock. Speaking of those dividends, let's start with the dividends. We paid dividends during the period. So we have a cash payment of dividends that has to go on here. And we already figured out that number in our formulas. We paid $21,000 for dividends during the period. We paid that, which means our cash flow has to be going down. We took the money out of our company bank account and gave it to our shareholders. So that payment of dividends has to decrease cash flow. Next up, we would have anything else to do with long-term debt or with our equity accounts. And we see over here, we have notes payable. Went from 70,000 to 90,000. And in our information, it tells us that the entire difference in notes payable on the comparative balance sheet is the amount of cash the company received for signing a note. So we signed a note with a bank in order to borrow that $20,000 difference that we have. So on our statement of cash flows, that would be a cash receipt for signing notes payable. And the difference between those two numbers, it went from 90,000 up to 90,000 from 70,000. We brought in $20,000 cash for assigning, signing a new note. We have on our balance sheet an increase of $5,000 to common stock. We sold our shares to new shareholders and we brought in $5,000 cash for doing so. So the next item that we have to put on here is the cash receipt for our common stock issuance. And that is just the difference between the two numbers that you have on here. And that is a $5,000 increase that's gonna increase our cash flows by five grand. Once our stock's out in the public, we can repurchase it if we want to. And we see right here that our treasury stock increased from 7,000 up to 8,000. It's always reported negative on a balance sheet because it's a contra equity account. What do we do here? Well, our information tells us right here that we paid cash to repurchase outstanding shares of the company's own common stock in the treasury. We don't have anything else about we sold some of our treasury stock, blah, 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 blah. We just paid cash to buy even more shares, which means on our statement of cash flows, we need to account for the cash payment for the purchase of treasury stock. And that number, according to our balance sheet, is an increase of $1,000 in this case. We paid money to buy more treasury stock, which means our cash flow has to be going down and it's negative. So that's exactly what's happening. So for both the operating and investing sections, you need to ask yourself, are we the ones shelling out the cash. We bought the equity investments. We bought these plan assets. We bought that treasury stack, stock back. We took cash out to pay dividends. In all those instances, money's flowing out of our company. They need to be reported negative. Or are you the one bringing in the cash? 
We took on a bank loan. We signed a notes payable. We have to be bringing in cash there. We issued new shares of common stock. People bought them from us. We have to be the ones receiving cash. So for cash receipts for all of these items, you increase your cash flow. For cash payments, you decrease your cash flow. And in total, from financing, from everything I had to do with our long-term debt, our equity, and our withdrawal accounts, the sum of those numbers is $3,000. And that makes sense if you think about it. If we took the $20,000 loan that we had and the $5,000 that came in from common stock and we turned around and we spent a thousand of that $25,000 in total to buy back more shares, we'd be down to 24 grand. And if we spent another 21,000 to pay dividends, we would be down to $3,000. So net all the things that we had to do with our financing model increased our cash flow by three grand. And now we have the net increase or decrease in cash. And that is the sum of your three different sections. This is the sum of your operating section, your investing section, in your financing section. And I'm going to go and I'm going to turn those just red so we know what numbers I'm adding up. I can't tell you how many times on this assignment or any statement of cash flows assignment across all of my accounting classes, I've seen students add up this whole column. You can't do that because if you added up the whole column, you would be counting the cash that came from your operating twice. Like we came to that 68,000 by adding 30,000 and 38,000. If you just hit sum of the whole column, it would add that 68,000 and the 68,000, you'd be adding your operating twice. So for your net increase or decrease in cash, it's just the three numbers that I put into red. Let's add those three numbers together. The sum of those three numbers is $16,000. We had an increase because it's positive to cash of 16 grand. Does that number make sense? on our balance sheet. Did we have an increase to the amount of cash we're reporting on our balance sheet of $16,000 for what we're reporting this year versus what it was the last time we reported? Well, it was 90,000 this year. It was 74,000 the last time we reported. That is an increase of 16 grand. So we know our statement of cash flows is correct. To be thorough on here, so users of our information don't have to go and check if that, what I just did makes, you know, is correct. Let's make it easy for them and just copy over our cash balance from our balance sheet to finish our statement of cash flows. We had $74,000 of cash as of December 31st, 2020. It is now up to $90,000 taken from our comparative balance sheet. And that shows users of our information that it did indeed increase by $16,000, which is the sum of the cash provided by operating activities used for investing activities and provided by financing activities.